All right, so the starting point is to imagine that we have a graph, and I haven't drawn the whole graph. I've, I only want to focus on a spanning tree. So imagine there are many other edges up here. But what I've done is look at a spanning tree. Now, pick any edge which is not in the tree. All right, so I'm going to go backwards here. See where that edge E is? When I go back, it's not there. When I go forward, it is. Not, it is. OK. So the edge E is not in that spanning tree. If I add E to tree, I get a cycle. Because you can see it. There's a cycle that consists of black edges and one red edge. Now, take any edge on that cycle. I pick one, call it F. It's any edge on that cycle. Now, throw E away and put in F. What do I have? A spanning tree. It's just like bases in vector spaces. Back up. Take a spanning tree. Take something which is not in the basis, not in the spanning tree. It's an edge, so it isn't zero. That edge is a linear combination of basis elements. The ones with non-zero coefficients are the ones around the cycle. And if you identify anyone with a non-zero coefficient, like f, you throw away f and insert e, and you have a new basis, a new spanning tree. That's the exchange principle for spanning trees, and it should remind you of linear algebra. All right, now I saw three questions. I'll start here. Yes? The exchange principle apply to minimum spanning trees as well? Yes, but it's just a principle about spanning trees. I, just period, just spanning trees. Take any connected graph. Take all the spanning trees, then you have this exchange principle. Okay. There was a question over. Yes. Um, is is the picture incorrect, or am I misunderstanding it? Were we supposed to be keeping the new edge E that we added? No. No. If you keep the edge E, you don't have a tree. And then, well, how is this different from the original? See that green edge? Watch it. Uh, okay, it, it, the, the thing that's different, see that green edge? Watch it. Uh, okay. uh, you might have a good <laughs> point here. Here's the original one. Um, this is a PowerPoint error here. But thank you very much for bringing it up. Uh, what you're supposed to do is add the extra edge E. Now you take any, take any edge on the cycle. I did, that's F. Now what I want to do is throw away F and put in E. I did, the next slide is backwards. So this is, this is identical to the original one, and I want to I want it backwards. Let, let me take a smaller example just to make sure that this point is clear. So here's a spanning tree. And I take any edge which is not in that tree. Oh, how about this one? So this is the edge E. E is not in the tree. Now I look at the two endpoints, and 
the two endpoints are connected by a unique path in the tree. Pick one. Doesn't matter which one. Say this one. This is F. So now the correct thing to do is to exchange them by removing F and inserting E. So my intent, and I'll fix this when I post the slides, is that that edge is removed and this edge is inserted. Now it's a different spanning tree. Again, thank you for pointing that out. So this is the exchange principle. And I, I, I say it again one more time. This really should be suggestive of basic principles of linear algebra. Okay. Now, there's a field underneath. And it's not the field of real numbers or the field of complex numbers that you've studied in calculus class. And, and, and we've actually studied it here when we did the advancement operator equations. Here, the field consists of 0 and 1. And you add them. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 0. And you multiply them. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. And you write down all the basic principles of vector spaces, rings, and fields. And that little field with two elements is a field. So what we're talking about is a vector space over a finite field, as opposed to a vector space over the traditional infinite fields of the reals and the complex numbers. And those cycles are linear combinations where all the coefficients are 1. And when you add up all the ones around a cycle, you get 0.